So um, this is overtime, and you know, uh, um, I wanted to cover this, but not in the actual full podcast. But I just recently got back from Dubai, which was a Muslim country, and I wanted to talk briefly with Pastor Daniels about the differences of how I was treated as a man in a Muslim country mm-hmm. versus being treated in a Christian country. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pastor Daniels, I, I'm going to tell you, you know, I want to, you know, sanctify for the Holy Ghost and all that stuff and baptize and everything. Mm-hmm. They pay a pretty good, um, mm-hmm. a pretty good, uh, what's a advertisement mm-hmm. for, for, you know, being a uh, Muslim mm-hmm. over in Dubai mm-hmm. because I was treated like a king. And, and, and I've told people, I don't know if it's because by being a black man in America that I didn't know that I could be. I've never been treated with respect. Mm-hmm. So that might have been the main difference. You know, when I was there, most uh, most men treat other men with the utmost respect. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say that the women was treated, you know, you know, that's a sure. different culture. Right. But it was it was pretty different. Mm-hmm. So I guess and I'm coming around the corner here in this uh, conversation is. Why or where or when did this happen with Christianity to to I'm pretty sure the Bible has respect, of course, has respect for men. But what happened? Well, let me say this. Number one is that the Quran and the Bible, generally speaking, set the same standard for men and women, generally speaking. Okay. The issue is when did Christianity uh, walk away from right. the division and the, the, the respect for men being in a dominant role and women being in a supportive role? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and and, 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 and that, that, that change happened primarily as Christianity moved to Western cultures. Gotcha. Okay. Um, think about it. Think about um, the, how, how things, if you look at the Old Testament, for example, uh, consider how um, Sarah, for example, treated Abraham, mm-hmm. right? Uh, her, her sole purpose, she felt like, was to give him a child, right? Right. So much so that she was willing to take her handmaiden and say, "You go in with my husband, right? Because I can't give him a child, right? Right. That that's how she felt. In fact, the, the Bible says that women should treat their husbands like she treated Abraham. In fact, she called him Lord, right? That that right. was the respect she had for him. Uh, you, you you look at the New Testament, right? Uh, once Jesus had reached an age uh, where he was uh, considered a man, look at how he talked to his mother. And not that it was disrespectful, but he talked to her as if he had authority that, that over her. Right. You know, you know. Uh, they had a wedding, for example, and she asked him to do something. He turns her and says, "Woman, what have I to do with thee?" And as if to say to her wait a minute, why are you asking me to do something of this nature, you know, right. uh, when I haven't proposed it myself, you know, which we would never think to treat, talk to our mother like that. Right. It would be, yes, ma'am. Right. Boom, right, you know, you, you do it. Uh, the Bible says, for example, women should not usurp authority over a man, okay? Uh, the Bible says that man is head of his household as Christ is head of the church, Right. Right. Now, do you feel that way? No. No. Do I feel that way? No. Does Does American culture accept it that way? No. No. We do the opposite because mm-hmm. we say what the woman is head. The woman makes all the decisions. You know, it's up to her. You, I was watching a game show the other day. Uh, the Price is Right. Uh, not the Price. I'm sorry. Let's make a deal. Watching Let's Make a Deal, and a person had a choice between you know curtain number one and and some money. And he turns and says, wait a minute, let me ask my wife. Right. Right. And if you think about it, that's how we do things publicly. Now, right. privately, it might be a little different, but publicly, we always defer and say, well, honey, what would you want? Right. You know, da, 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 da. So our culture has caused us to go against the Bible. It's not that Christianity 
you know, does not separate the duties. Christianity does. Christianity says that the husband should be head of the household, but the Western culture says right. the wife should be head of the household. Right. It, and it was it was real interesting going out, being there for a week, like, um, like even though it was my wife was buying something, they was handing it to me. Mm-hmm. And she was standing right there, but they would come around, walk around like like it's almost like she didn't exist. It's like mm-hmm. she came, they came, the people came straight to me. Mm-hmm. Where you know here it's like the woman's making all the decision and is going to buy everything, so they go straight to the woman. Right, it's like you don't exist. Right, it's like I, it was it was weird, and and I just kept thinking, and um, I kept thinking I was like, wow, this this is huge, and then the way black men are treated, mm-hmm. completely different. It's um. You know, if I I would say I told my wife, I said, you know what? If they started a back to Africa movement <laughs> now, and all they would have to do is send a couple of people over there as like advocates, mm-hmm. and because you know, it's, it, overseas is nothing like well, how it's depending on where you go. Right, I, I get it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. right, right. <laughs> yeah. you go to a developed part of Africa. Right, you yeah. and. Especially with the education that you have. And this is the stuff that we take for granted. Mm-hmm. The education that we have available to us and mm-hmm. we are getting. Mm-hmm. And then we're allowing society, like we just got through talking about in the previous podcast, mm-hmm. society is telling us what we can and can't do. Mm-hmm. Where you go to another country, even just when I went to France, it was mm-hmm. like, you can do whatever you, it really was, you can do what you want to do. Where here they say they you can do that. But then, okay, well, your loan is not going to go through mm-hmm. or this, 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 and the other mm-hmm. is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Another thing I want to ask you about, Dr. Daniels, was in Muslim culture, and it is true, they pray five times a day. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the man came on the same and during, the, um, during the day and every, not those, everybody those, stops. Those who are devout Muslims. Right. And yeah. everybody didn't stop doing what he was doing to pray. Right. Mm-hmm. But I also noticed that um, what we had talked about before, that there was no, it's not a two day weekend, it's a one day mm-hmm. weekend, which was their Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And and they didn't necessarily like go to church. That's the thing that was strange. It's like they had a mosque, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like they was going there because they already prayed, I guess, five times a day. Mm-hmm. You know, how does that, how did that different um, change? With the Quran and, and the Bible was going in step and step and step. So mm-hmm. when did it start separating to where um, people that was, um, I say, so say Jewish or Christian mm-hmm. don't pray five times and Muslims did do pray five times? Well, um, a day. The, the Bible says men ought to always pray and not faint. Right. Which indicates that five times a day is a minimum. <laughs> In, in, in fact, uh, if you consider uh, Daniel, uh, mm-hmm. one of the problems, one of the, thing, one of the things that caused some difficulty for Daniel mm-hmm. was that th- there was a decree that said you can't ask anything of anyone other than the king. And Daniel said, forget that, I'm going to pray. And right. so Daniel still prayed, you know, as he uh, always did, and the result was he got thrown in the lion's den, <laughs> okay? So it's not like the Bible doesn't have that in it. And in the New Testament, you know, the, the concept was there's not specific times to pray, but that prayer is such a privilege and that God is your Father, so therefore, you know, one should always seek Him, you know, all through the day for, for different things. So, and even in our culture in America, if you think about it, um, the prayer is more than three times a day. Just if you just look at it from a, from a simple standpoint of this, when I wake up in the morning, my mom, your mother says, you know, pray, right? Mm-hmm. Then you, if you pray each meal, that's three more times, right? Then you pray before you go to bed, that's five times. So you're praying five times a day. It's just that, you know, they're not set the same set the times time. for everybody, but that's still five times. But again, the Bible says pray without ceasing, which means it should be, you know, prayer should be the thing you do, you know, all, all the time. So that's really not a big difference when you really think about it. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, do, do all, do, do American Muslims, 
you know, stop everything and pray? Um, no. Right. Not all of them. No. They don't. So some do. Some don't. No. When I worked as a correction officer in the prison system, did they stop? Yeah, they stopped. They, they weren't doing anything anyway. Right. So they stopped and <laughs> took their prayer cloth and kneeled right. down and prayed. Uh, but, you know, I went to college with Muslims and they didn't stop. Right. <laughs> you, you know, I worked with Muslims that didn't stop. You, you know, so I, I think it's more of a cultural, I think it's a Western thing um, that, that causes people so think to, this to in, do that. And um, Islam is just basically, it's more promoted. It seems like it's because I mean the guy comes on the on the intercom at the set time, right? Because it's, it's a part. See, here's another thing. In 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 many Islamic countries, Islam is not just a religion; it is also how you are governed. Gotcha. In Christian countries, Christianity is not how you are governed, and that's why in the Old Testament it was different. Because in the Old Testament time frame in, in, in Israel and in Jerusalem, the um, governing, what they used to govern the people was the Mosaic Law. We don't govern by the Mosaic Law. You know, we govern based on the Constitution right. and, 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 and the laws that we have locally that have to fit within the realm of the Constitution. See, that's the primary difference. So if you're in a country where they use that, uh, they use the Quran as the basis for their laws, the Sharia law, then that's why you have to do it because it's the, it's, it's, it's legal. It's the right. legal system that's been set up. Right. We don't have that as our legal system, and that's why it's separate. That's why for us, is if you don't do it, nothing will happen to you because you it's, you know it's not law. Right. It's, it's a choice. Right. Well, thank you, Pastor Daniels, for answering those questions for me. And that, like I thought about you quite a lot yeah. when I was over there, <laughs> and. Uh, and thank you all so much for joining us for Overtime. Like I said, this was a special little thing. Thank you all so much. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Till next time.